Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this folded paper effect. First we'll create a background. Open a new document and zoom out. Select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to cover the whole artboard. If you would like to use the same gradient as mine, here are the values. It is a simple two-color radial gradient. Let's adjust it and lock this layer. Next, create a new layer, select the Type tool and type a word. This works best with bold fonts. Let's change the fill to white. Now right-click with your mouse and choose Create Outlines. Next, we'll cut each letter in one or two places. Those will be the fold lines. To do this, select the knife tool. It is hidden under the eraser tool. Before you do anything, press and hold down the Alt key. Now click, hold and drag to make a straight cut. And let's create more cuts. Now make a new layer and open the sublayers in layer 2. Notice all the shapes are now selected. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and click on the artboard to deselect. Now select the main letter shape and while holding down the Shift key select the other three. You will notice only those four shapes are now selected. Let's select all of them and move them to the new layer we've created. Now rename the layer to something you will remember. I'm going to use LS for letter shapes. Next create another layer, select all the remaining shapes and move them here. Let's give it a different name. I will use LF for letter folds. With the layer selected, change the fill to a different color. In the next several steps, we will reflect all the cut shapes to the inside. First, zoom in on one of the red shapes. Then switch to the Direct Selection tool, click away to deselect and select the red shape. With the shape selected, press the letter O for the Reflect tool or select it from the toolbar panel. Before we go to the next step, let's lock the other layers. Now move the Reflect point to the top of the bottom or top left anchor point. To do this, just click on the anchor point. Now select the other anchor point and drag your mouse to the left to make the fold visible. If you don't see the red shape, you might want to turn on the outline mode, click on the shape, then right click with your mouse, choose Arrange and bring to front. Let's zoom in on this corner. Notice that my anchor points are not aligned. To fix it, go to View and make sure that all the snap options are unchecked. Now align your points. And let's repeat the same process with all the other shapes. Next we'll create this effect. First let's zoom in on one of the red shapes. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and make sure your shape is selected. Now go to Effect, Warp and choose Arch. And this is how your shape should look like. If you are bending your shape to the left or right, select the Vertical option and if you are bending it up or down, choose the Horizontal option instead. You might need to adjust the bend percentage to get the look you desire. To do this, highlight the number and use the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard. Make sure the red shape overlaps the white shape with no visible edge. And let's repeat the same process with all the other shapes.
For this shape, you will use the horizontal bend option instead. Next, we'll add a gradient. First, select all the red shapes, then go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Here is a two-color gradient I will be using today. Zoom in on one of the shapes, press the letter G to show the gradient annotator on the screen and adjust the gradient. Keep the darker color towards the outside edge and the lighter color towards the inside. Now do the same with the other shapes. Select the top layer with all the shapes and let's copy it. Now lock the bottom layer. With the top layer still selected, we will add a drop shadow effect to our shapes. Let's zoom in on one of the shapes and select it. Now go to Effect, Stylize and choose Drop Shadow. Turn on the preview box to better see what we are doing and let's make some adjustments. Set the opacity to about 30% and the X and Y offset to get a desired look. Set the blur to about 3 pixels. And repeat the same process with the other shapes. When you are done, select the top layer, then go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Click on the tab layers arrow to open the sub layers and make this window a little wider. Then open the bottom group layer. We need to keep only the image layer and delete the group layer. To do this, select the bottom group layer and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now do the same with all the other groups. Let's unlock the top two layers. Now select the letter shapes layer and copy it. With the layer still selected, go to object, compound path and choose make. Then move this layer to the top. Make sure that both top layers are selected. Right click with your mouse and choose make clipping mask. Next, move the top layer between the letter shapes and letter folds layer to create a shadow. Let's select the letter shapes layer and add a one point stroke aligned to inside. Here is the color I will be using today. If you wish, you could add an extra fill. To do this, swap the stroke and the fill, select the first letter shape, then open the appearance panel and click on the add new fill icon. Now choose your color or a gradient. Here is one I will be using. Then adjust the gradient. Select the next shape and repeat the same process. Now do the same with the remaining two shapes. If you like, you can select the shadow layer, then open the transparency window and turn down the opacity. Finally, select the letter Shapes layer, go to Effect, Stylize and choose Drop Shadow. Now adjust the values. Thanks for watching, bye bye.